hello everyone in our previous video we have already learned what is mutual exclusion and when it is required so let us do division what is mutual exclusion if we wants to define mutual exclusion then it is a way of making sure that if one process is using a shared resource or variable or we can say is file at the same time the other process will be excluded or we can say stop from being the same thing means it's a way of giving surety that at a particular time only one process is using the shared resource or we can say shared file now here way is nothing but a mechanism so we have different mechanisms to achieve mutual exclusion so these are the different mechanisms for achieving mutual exclusion with busy waiting these are the six different mechanism we will learn each and every mechanism one by one but in this video we will learn about disabling interrupt so let us see disabling interrupt we will consider the previous example two process a and b here process starts from here and up to here this process is there in critical region during this portion we have already learned what is critical section critical section means a part of program or a part of process in which it access the shared resource so here this process is using the shared resource during this portion means from time t1 to time t3 and process b is using a shared resource from time t3 to time t4 so this one is the critical section for process b now let us see algorithm first step while true whenever this condition becomes true now this condition is true for process a at time t1 why means whenever any process is trying to enter into critical region at that time this condition becomes true for that process at that point means here this process a wants to enter in critical region at time t1 so here this first condition becomes true if we consider for process b then process b is trying to enter in critical region over time 3 so here this first condition becomes true over here at time t3 now here process a remains in critical region up to time t3 and process b remains in critical region up to time t4 now second is disable interrupt so whenever a process is trying to enter into critical region this condition becomes true before entering into critical region it will disable the interrupt so here at time t1 before entering into critical region this process a will disable the interrupt now once the interrupt is disabled will enter into critical section so now this portion is critical section now whenever this process has finished its work into critical region this process is exited from the critical section so during exit from the critical section this process a will again enable the interrupt so again enable interrupt and remaining section is nothing but a non critical section so this portion is means after time t3 is non critical section for a process a now if you consider for process b then pro process b at time t3 it will disable interrupt then after critical section is from time t3 to time t4 and at the time of exit from critical section it will again enable the interrupt so before entering into critical section a process will disable the interrupt and during the exit from the critical section the process will enable the interrupt once your interrupt is disabled no any other process will access that critical section means for example suppose a process b is trying to enter into critical region over here suppose but already process a is in critical section so this process a has already disabled the interrupt so this process b will not be able to disable the interrupt because interrupt is already disabled so in this way at a particular time only one process is there in critical section now let us move further 
what are the problems or what are the disadvantages of disabling the interrupt first thing is it is unattractive or we can say unwise to give user process the power to turn off the interrupt means we cannot give the power to turn off the interrupt to user process because operating system or a kernel will not interfere in this case if we give rights to the user process to power turn off or to turn off the interrupt what's happened if we give a power to turn off the interrupt to user process then what's happened if one of them is if one of the user process will disable the interrupt and will never enable that interrupt again then what would happen it will be the end of the system that's why it is unattractive or unwise to give a user process the power to turn off the interrupt if the system is multi processor means within a system having more than one processor with two or more cpu the disabling interrupt will affect only one cpu or only that cpu that execute the disable interrupt the other one will continue running the running and can access the set memory or set resource means if we are using multi processor computer then the disabling interrupt will only execute into the processor or the cpu which can execute it but the process that is executed by another cpu cannot follow the disabling interrupt mechanism so we can says that this mechanism will not work in multi processor computer this mechanism only works in single processor computer only so these are the problems of disabling interrupt thank you